The message today is called Pure as Gold. And it seems like that the harder that we try to do things and the more we try to trust God, the harder it gets and the more trouble we get into. You ever notice that? Yeah. I had a lady the other day, she says, she asked me, she said, I just don't understand why such bad stuff happens to good people. She said, I looked at and she said, I've got some neighbors, and she said, they're just, they're always drunk. And she said, they're partying all the time, they're making a racket. And she said, nothing bad ever happens to them. But she said, let the ones that's trying to do for God, and let the ones that's trying to be good, and they got cancer, and they got this happens and the car breaks down and just always something going on. But really, I think we just get Satan's attention. And it seems like that we're getting into more trouble than others. Now there are things that happen. There were three men uh, described in the Bible, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Here these guys were sort of minding their own business. It wasn't their fault that so many things had gone wrong. They're teenagers, and they're in Judah. But their ancestors have just done so many things that weren't in God's favor that God allowed them to be captured. He allowed them to be taken into captivity. And this area that they were sent to was known for, they worshipped everything, especially statues. All you had to have was a statue they are going to worship it. And at this particular time, the king's name was Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar was one of these people that he says, now, what can I do to make me really look good? What is something that I can come up with that's going to really give me a good reputation? And sometimes I think even in this country we have a king that's trying to do things that makes himself look good. It's not for the best of the nation, but it makes him look good. And that's what Nebuchadnezzar was doing. So Nebuchadnezzar says, why don't I just build this 90 foot tall statue and I'll build it nine feet wide. And then I can get everybody to come worship this statue. And it's going to be the biggest statue that's around. So, and everybody will come worship it. So if they come worship it, they'll think, wow, Nebuchadnezzar built this statue. He must be a really big king. He must be really great. And so, in his head, he's doing something great for the country that's going to pull it all together. And he's going to get the fame for it. He's going to get the glory. And, and I was just kind of, as I looked at this message, I thought about this health care thing that we're fighting and fussing and feuding over that, that our president has um, come up with. And, and people look at it as a monster. And others look at it as a good thing. And I'm sure that's the same thing that happened in Babylon. They looked at this as a good thing. But it brought the fame to the king. Not to where it's supposed to go. Look at the third chapter of Daniel. And I think it's such a good story that we'll just probably read the whole chapter. But it tells what's going on and how this came about what's going on and, and why that the story affects these three guys named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It says that King Nebuchadnezzar had made a gold image 90 feet high, 9 feet wide. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps and the prefects and the governors and the advisors and treasurers and the judges and the magistrates and all other provincial officials to come to the dedication of the image. So in other words, if you had any authority at all, 
he invited them. He wanted this thing to really be important. So, everybody shows up. They assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, This is what you're commanded to do, O peoples, nations, and men of every language. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zipper, lyric, harp, pipes, and all other kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whosoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Therefore, as soon as they heard the king, heard the sound of the horn, the flute, the zephyr, the lyre, the harp, and all kinds of music, all the peoples and nations and the men of every language fell down, and they worshipped the image of gold that the king Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and they denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You have issued a decree, O king, that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the, the, the zephyr, the lyre, the harp, the pipes, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you, O king. They neither serve your gods, nor worship the image of gold that you've set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I've set up. Now, when you hear the, the sound of the horn, the flute, the zephyr, the lyrics, the harp, pipes of all kinds of music, if you're ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But when you do not worship it, you'll be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then, what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But if he does not, we want you to know, O king, that will not serve your gods or worship your image of gold. This is pretty brave. These guys are just saying, toss us in the farm. We'll go in the fire. Our God will save us. And if he don't, we're still not going to worship your gods. We've got a God that we're standing up for. Well, it says that Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude toward him changed. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. And he commanded some of his strongest soldiers in the army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and others, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent, and the furnace was so hot that the flames a fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and the three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then the king leaped to his feet in amazement, and he asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that were tied up and thrown into the fire? They replied, Certainly, O king. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come out here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. And the satraps of Pexas, the governors, and the royal advisors crowded around them. And they saw that the fire had not harmed the bodies, nor was a hair of their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar 
Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angels and rescued the servants. They have trusted him and defiled the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than to serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other God can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Sometimes we need to read the whole story. We take this little part out. And I couldn't see how we could take any part of that story out and hear all of what it said. Here's three men that said, oh, we're not going to bow down before this idol. We've got a real God. We're not going to put this other God. They're, they were obeying the second commandment that says that you'll have no other gods before me. You can find that in Exodus 20, verse 3. But yet there was a penalty. And I thought this week, I was reading an article that was talking about the different places that we fall into penalties in Florida a couple of years back, where a principal and, and another person, excuse me, was, they actually sat down at the table and said the blessing over their food and were hauled off the court for praying in school. They were in private, bowed their heads and prayed that God bless the food that they were eating. And here's guys that were the same way. They were hauled off with a death penalty because they wouldn't bow down to a false god. These guys were defending their God and praying about the same thing. But would we be willing to even go to jail if we were sitting in a restaurant? Would we be strong enough to say a blessing over food when the sign says no praying in this building? And we bow in prayer and and somebody comes up and picks you on their shoulder and you look up and it's a law official and he says, are you praying? Can you say yes? Can you do like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and say, we're standing by our God. We're not going by your rules. And if this country keeps going the way it is, that's what's going to happen. Somebody's going to peck on the shoulder and say, are you praying in this restaurant in public? It's bad enough you're doing it in church. But now you're coming here to this restaurant and offending somebody by bowing your head? Don't look the other way, I'm praying. Can we do that? Can we stand up with the strength that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had? And what happened? In this fire, this furnace is fired seven times hotter than normal. So hot that the soldiers dropped dead trying to get them in there. But God allowed them to fall into the furnace anyway. Now here's a roaring fire. Lost my thought. I was thinking I did this message some time ago for a bunch of little children up in Buchanan and I was explaining one said, what's a furnace? And I said, well, you know what a wood stove is? It's like a giant wood stove. I happen to remember that. It just, you know. The stove's hot. So hot that it burns and kills the soldiers. Yet here's three men? No. No, but Nebuchadnezzar sees four. And he says he's like the son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar doesn't recognize that fourth person 
other than a son of the gods. Yet when he calls them out of the furnace, he recognizes them as their God protecting them. He didn't recognize the person that was in there with them, but he recognized that God was powerful enough to keep them from harm, to keep them from getting hurt. And when we look at this whole chapter and we look for what we're learning from it, there's actually four things that we learn from this chapter. First, we learn that obeying God's word doesn't exempt you from trouble. When we get saved, the fact that, that we come forward when they do the invitation and we walk up here and we say, Pastor, I'm going to give my life to God. I'm going to change my life. I want Jesus as my Savior. That's no insurance policy to ward off trouble. If anything, it'll probably stir it up because it's done upset the devil. And then another thing that happens that you find out when you're in a situation like this that you're not alone. Those guys went into that furnace and Nebuchadnezzar saw that fourth person. Saw somebody in there protecting them. God is omnipresent. We learned that a couple of weeks ago. He's here. He's everywhere. And He's going to be there to protect you. He's going to be there to help you. You're not ever going to be alone. And here's one thing that I thought that was that was really great. And I see this happening every day. That your trouble is going to be your testimony. I was talking to a young nurse down in, in uh, North Carolina a couple of weeks ago. And, and she came in and she said, you're a Christian, aren't you? And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, it shows. And I said, well, sometimes I wonder if it shows or not because I said, I've always wondered, it seems like it's so much things happen and trouble and trouble and trouble. Am I handling it well? And she said, yes. And she said, that's going to be your testimony. And I thought about it. I said, you know, so many people, you know, and they'll say, I was an alcoholic. God delivered me from drugs. God delivered me from this life of sin. I was in the gutter when I got saved. And I think, what powerful testimonies that people have. And you don't think about your trouble being your testimony. Didn't think about it until the nurse said, what a testimony. What a testimony that you've got what God's done for you. And I've heard people sit there and say, well, what's he done? Stop and look. He's done a lot more than you give him credit for. And I think the most important thing that this chapter ended up with that very last 30th verse says the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Our troubles is going to be our blessings. We're going to gain from them. And I have no doubt that this little battle And that's what it is. Between what we've gone through with this herniated disc in my neck and with this cancer of Christian, it's going to make us stronger. And it's going to show a whole lot of people what God can do. It's going to be that testimony that we need. But the thing is, remember what the message was titled today? 
Do you remember? Pure as gold. You know what gold is? It's like this ring. Never tarnishes. Never fades. It's always to go. Because it's been refined with fire. And that's what God does with us. All the trouble that he puts us through is refined us. When they take gold, they've got a rock that looks like any other old rock out here. It may have a little bit of orange color to it. But it certainly would look like nothing more than a rock. If I'd have thought about it, I could have brought another sample. Looks like a brown rock to me. But if you heat it up, and you heat it up, and you heat it up, and eventually you refine it, this little drop of gold will come out of it. And that's what God's doing with us as we go through all this trouble. He refines us through this fire. He makes us pure as gold. He'll make us so that we don't tarnish. He'll have us ready so when we walk on those streets of gold in heaven, we don't get them dirty. We're going to be pure as gold. We think we've got troubles. We're just being refined. We're just being cleaned up. We're going to one day be so we don't tarnish. We're going to be like the little angel that's got all the tumors. God's going to clean those tumors up and she's going to be pure as gold. Are you standing up? When God gives us challenges, are you standing up? Are you being refined so that you can be pure as gold? We're going to have troubles. They're not going to go away, but they make us stronger. Clean us up. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that as we face troubles, as we face the difficulties and Sometimes we don't even understand why they're happening. Father, that each of these troubles refine us, that makes us better, that gives us a better testimony of the blessings and the things that you've done for us. Father, we thank you through the refining process that one day that we can be as pure as gold. Father, that you can give us the courage to stand as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. Father, that we can stand against the evil one and stand up for the real and true God. Father, that we can be trusted, that we can be tested, and Father, that we can show ourselves approved. Father, that we can receive a blessing at the end of all of our tests and our trials. Father, we pray for you to just to give us that strength that we need. And Father, just lift us up when we start sinking. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. I'd like to thank everybody for being here today and look forward to seeing everybody next Sunday.